So welcome to the Six Monthly Beer Cast. My name is Katie Watts, and We've got Chuck T. Barrier. How you doing, Chuck? Not too bad. Not too bad. It's a different week this week than last week. Didn't uh, go to a, an event yesterday. It was just this is a Tuesday we're recording today, which is odd for us. Which uh, just means that we're getting drunk on a Tuesday instead of a Monday. Well, okay, that's maybe not that odd, but the the day of the week that we were recording on is is odd for us as we're as we're getting ready for the trip to Toronto. We wanted to get one more recording in so that we can have this being posted while we're traveling. And so we have a quite a different variety of beers on the table today. Variety is the key word. Yes, lots of different flavors happening here. So we we don't have one particular style. We have a variety of different flavors. Yes. We went for the additions to beer this time, thinking about the ways that you can add flavors to beer or add ingredients to beer to make it different, I guess. So to start off this podcast, and you know it's good to start off a podcast with a great beer, right? It's always great when we can do that. And so in this wonderful clear bottle, I have Wells Banana Bread Beer from Wells and Young Limited. It's a delicious 5.2% alcohol with, uh, I guess it's brewed with a little bananas and some extract in there. The whole thing about starting with a great beer? Yeah, I'm sure everyone has seen this in the LCBO. <laughs> it's that creepy, creepy beer in the clear bottle that looks fancy. And then you wonder, how can there be banana bread in a bottle? It, it, it is one of those first ones that I remember looking at and going, oh, you can do that with beer? You can do some weird flavors with it? And well, I wonder what that's like. I feel like it should be on one of those YouTube channels, like, will it beer? Good call. You know, and I, I don't know if it successfully works. I remember having this one time and not really enjoying it. I recall the same experience. It's been a long time since I've had it. None of so. us are drinking. Neither of us are drinking our glass. No, no. <laughs> we're just, we're just like, oh, looking at it at the moment. This is here now. And yeah, I guess we should actually drink it. Well, it would go with the theme. I suppose. Or we can just look at it and be like, "That's pretty." That's pr- it is pretty though. I mean, it, it does. It look is nice. a nice color. Yes. The head retention isn't bad. Overall, it looks like beer. It does. Oh, Chuck's going in for a taste. It smells a little bit like fake banana. It does, but it also kind of smells like bad beach beer. Oh, well, that would be due to the clear bottle, the skunkiness. Oh, this is... We'll just put that down on the table here for a second. (laughs) What was the other one we just had recently that that you said reminded you of the banana medicine that we used to get as kids, the, uh, the uh, antibiotics. I think it was the uh, Waller Street Heffa. Yes. But that one comes from yeast. And that one, went, it might have smelled that way, but at least it tasted good. It, exactly. I always thought that this beer got its banana flavors from yeast. And so it surprised me today when looking into the beer and, and reading more of the description that it actually is brewed with bananas and banana extract. And it has a lot of sugar, it has corn in it, it's traditionally like one of those, traditionally, it's one of those beers that is an adjunct ale. Yes, adjuncts, the way that they're used to brew cheaper beer, at least that's the, one of the definitions, right? So we, we, we were looking this up just before we started recording, trying to figure out what do adjuncts really mean? Because as we're looking at the various ingredients of, of these beers, a lot of people would say, well, any ingredient that's not the big four is, in fact, an adjunct. And other people say that adjuncts are really just unmalted grains that are added, to re- usually to reduce the cost, but sometimes to enhance flavor or other aspects of the beer, like maybe more head retention uh, or, or more aroma or things like that. In this case, this adjunct it would taste like banana. Not in a good way, though. Actually, what's funny is, as, as I was thinking about it, is the banana flavor might be the best part about this beer. <laughs> the, the, you can taste the adjunct quality of, of the actual beer. 
thing in this one. This is one of the this is that that flavor that I never liked about the macro beers that that come with it. It's that weird clingy back of the mouth kind of fakey taste, and that is what really distribute like really ruins the the flavor of this beer. The banana itself weird, but you know fine. Can you imagine if this was your go-to beer? Like, you came home after a long day at work, and you're like, oh, God, I really got to get me a bottle of banana bread. I'll put a lot of ice in it. I could probably get behind that. But at that point, why aren't you just drinking cider or something? A cocktail. There, exactly. are, there is a banana liqueur that you can go out and just pour a banana martini, and I think I can get behind that more than I can get behind this. I would probably go with you there. So we're going to just cast this beer aside and move on to something a bit hopefully a bit more palatable so we've got a, a, a nice selection are you okay we're gonna go with the silver bullet right silver bullet we're getting um initial release i guess it's coming out very very soon when we're recording this uh this is nita nita beers pineapple sour what's the what's the title on this one they have no title yet, so we have no name for it yet. Pineapple Sour. But pineapple Sour? You've told me that this is a pineapple version of their Berliner Weiss. Yeah, that's what we're, we we found out. So the so they have a brand new Berliner Weiss that they added. We got to try that uh, on the weekend for the first time. It's a really nice Berliner Weiss. So this one they added 100% organic pineapple juice into that. So it's a classic sort of way of to deal with a, a Berliner, you can add sweet syrups into it to give it that extra punch and cut down some of the tartness from the sour. Pineapple is not something I've seen. I've seen it in saisons and, and other sour beers, but not, not so much as a syrup in a Berliner. No, and usually with Berliner Weisses, the syrup is added after the beer is poured. So usually they'll, they'll give you the Berliner Weiss and then they'll pump in a few, uh, or they'll give you a chaser of some syrup to pour in yourself. But this one has the pineapple already mixed in, and it's actually very, very nice. I really enjoyed the balance between the tartness of the Berliner Weiss and the sweetness slash tartness of the pineapple. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's really nice. This could be an easygoing beer that you drink on a patio on a really hot, humid day in Ottawa. I could see the appeal to this. So this is like a beer where the added flavor it works together with the beer and it doesn't necessarily work against it yeah yeah it, it actually is sort of similar to a radler except for that extra tartness that the berliner brings in both of those the tartness and the sweetness really go well together and, and make this a very refreshing drinkable beer kind of goes along with some of the other flavor experiments that Nita has done in the past. So they've added some other flavors to some of their other beers. So they have a licorice uh, stout that they put out. Um, they have a ginger beer that they put out. And they have a, a, a beer with uh, spruce as well. So they do have a history of putting adjuncts or not or extra Flavorings. flavoring into their into their beer. So that's part of it. If, if you have that practice and experience with adding flavors to your beer you might have a better sense of how you're getting a compliment there rather than uh, you know clashing yeah it definitely gives you more opportunities to to learn how it works for sure i remember they did a fall beer that had like a huge amount of cinnamon in it i believe it was yes. like a cinnamon bomb yes I don't autumn know, bomb That's yes but i don't know if they imagined uh that it would actually have that big of a flavor when they did it but i'm sure that they would learn from that and perhaps adjust the recipe down a little bit yeah that one i found was a bit overspiced but uh that's i guess learning experience and you know going with that i mean i think they did some experiments with that with casks as well which might have been able to work with the spices a bit speaking of casks nita are actually doing some very interesting casks recently like i know today is cask tuesday at uh craft beer market and they're doing a combination cask with their beer mixed with um, flying canoe cider. So oh. That's an interesting combination in the cask. So they really, really are going out there for that different flavor combinations. And that is really fun. Whether it's mostly a novelty or it's something really delicious, I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess it can be a little bit of both. I mean, if you're going for strict novelties, then, then I mean, there were, we got a couple of good examples on that as we were talking beforehand. 
that uh, famous testicle beer. But is that a novelty, though? That's more of a... It's, I believe it's an Icelandic beer that's based on traditions. So while it may be novelty for us North American uh, drinkers, for them it actually may be more based in history. True. Never really thought of it that way. That's a good point, though. I mean, some of these, what we consider novelty in general, might always, like, ginger beers might be novelty here, but again, I know they're very uh, popular in, well, where the, the origin, origin, Jamaica, right? That's a... Uh, tends to be where they would not they wouldn't consider it as a novelty uh, although a very much a novelty beer was one I had way back a few years ago was a kimchi beer brewed by, by the Wellington Gastro Pub and Bose that was definitely novel I have not seen that one come back um, I don't I expect shocked. it to <laughs> definitely tasted like kimchi but I'm glad I didn't drink a full pint. And I wonder what makes those brewers want to make those somewhat so-called novelty beers. Do they decide like, yeah, kimchi, totally into it. going to make a beer. Or I remember having at cask days, I believe it was a sausage and sauerkraut cask. That seems interesting. It was awful. <laughs> but they did, uh, I forget what the brewery who did it was but they made a whole spoof of it they made t-shirts they were promoting the hell out of it they were having lots of fun with this cask and i guess that's part of it i mean if you're gonna go all the way in and, j and basically call yourself all in and, and and play up the gimmick aspect and then then at least you're being honest about it and you're just having fun with it and that's fine that's a, that, i think anyway i think that's that's great going and having some extra fun with your with, i mean why are you in the beer to begin with if you're not having fun? Exactly. And I think that's kind of what separates beer potentially from wine or even spirits is that we're able to have fun like this. If you want to have a banana bread beer, no comment, or if you want to have something like a pineapple Berliner Weiss, you can have that and we can have, experiment with flavors. Speaking of another beer that I think is a bit wacky and I have not had yet, although people tell me that it's still super delicious, the Stoss Hefe's from Stalwart Brewing Company. It's an India Pale Ale with vanilla and grapefruit. Yes. It sounds wacky, the vanilla with the grapefruit. In my mind, it sounds like it doesn't mix. So this is a 7% ABV, 61 IBU beer. I will admit to being, originally just being intrigued by the concept of it and wondering how it might work. After having it the first time, I, I thought it worked out really, really well. I was pleasantly surprised, and I'm glad that they are continuing to do it. I will be interested in your reaction, though, for sure. So I'm not a big fan of vanilla in beer. I find typically that vanilla overpowers everything in a beer, especially in like a porter or a stout. Especially if it's that extract, uh, it can really go big and really is just overpowering and sickeningly sweet. Right, so here we found the... The vanilla extract they use is homemade. So it's not a fake vanilla extract. This is the proper way to extract vanilla. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know. I just took a sip, and I don't know what I think about is happening right here. You definitely do get the grapefruit, and you definitely do get the vanilla. And I don't know what to think about those two things in my mouth at the same time. But neither are all that overwhelming. No, but the vanilla is definitely there. And I, I did mention before that I'm not a big fan of vanilla in beer. I do find it to be something that needs to be used with some caution. So, uh, which I would agree with. And I think if they did cut back the vanilla a little bit on this, it would probably be a little bit better balanced. But that's just because I think the grapefruit comes out first, and then the vanilla really kind of lingers around. And may maybe a little bit of... Uh, uh, Less extracts in that case would, would allow the, the rest of the flavors to come through at the end. So this almost tastes like to me a, a creamsicle made out of grapefruit. Mm. Like a, one of those popsicles, only it's a grapefruit one with the bitterness. Right, rather than the orange. Yes. That's a really good take on that. I, I, I could get behind that. And so it, it definitely has that creaminess to it that the vanilla brings. I don't, I'm not sure if I like this. I don't know. I'm still kind of trying to process it in my mind. It definitely is a different flavor than I've ever had. I haven't had grapefruit and vanilla together. No, but I think now that if you, uh, the, that creamsicle aspect is really giving, giving it a different twist for me. I don't know how many people would enjoy buying 
that grapefruit creamsicle, but I think I would. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who makes creamsicles anymore, but we have a new product for you. Put like a hop cone on it, you'll have a whole new market. The craft beer lovers would be all over this. And so do you think this is something that has, I'm going to use a big word here, transcended novelty? I think it's, be- it's meta-novel. Wow. In the sense that the novelty itself adds to the reason why people want it and want it and keep wanting it, which has sort of led itself to be a more regular brew that they're going to do. In the sense that it's it's such a weird combo that people don't expect it to be good. And then when they have it and it's good, they realize, oh, wait, I kind of want more of it because it's something so different and novel. Yeah, I guess it's, it sort of feeds in upon itself. Well, this is definitely good. I, I would probably have a second pint of it. I, well, I would definitely have a full pint of it, for sure. Right. Yeah, I think after a full pint, it, the vanilla might stick around, and it might be nice to break it up with something else, and then you could come back to it. But I, I do agree that I could drink definitely a full pint and a half. 613 Beer Cast After Dark, people were saying this is one of the beers that they loved that had those extra flavorings to it. Yeah, so. it's definitely made the impression around here, for sure. Uh, being obviously close to us, uh, it, 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 it sells out pretty quickly for them. So now we're going to transition to something that I would consider definitely a novelty beer. Definitely started that way. And so this is Maple Butter Tart Ale by Sada City. And it's a 5% ABV ale brewed with a variety of different extracts. So it tastes exactly like a butter tart. And it actually does. From what I remember when I first had it, the it was it's surprising how much it tastes like a butter tart. But see, that always gets me. Why would you want something that tastes like a dessert, like a taste like a butter tart? Well, that was in a beer. That was the challenge for the initial brew. So, as part of the, the sessions Muskoka, I believe that they were doing, or session of Toronto, one of the sessions, um, they were sort of challenged with it as a, can you do this? And so they thought about it. And so they reached into the bag of extracts. All of the extracts. And they got maple extract, rum extract, I believe, was also on the can there. Butter rum, maple, vanilla, caramel. All of the extracts. And they made this delightful little treat. And from what I know, it's based on their alt beer recipe. So the alt beer is their base recipe with all of these extracts in it. So that alt beer should give you a nice multi bready backbone, which gives you the crust of the butter tart. So smelling it, it smells definitely like the the, the mushy part of the butter tart. <laughs> <laughs> to use my technical terms. Maybe it has a raisin in it, maybe it doesn't. I don't know what your preference is. No, no raisins. Raisins okay. are raisins are wrong. I can go either or. I'm not gonna lie. I, I, yeah. I, I will eat the ones with raisins in them because it's really good. <laughs> I know. But, if it's there, you're going to say no. I'm like, no, no, I will not eat you. You're a butter tart. <laughs> I am not that picky. I'm sorry. No. No. Now they get, then again, I've put chocolate chips in my butter tarts and was really happy with that. Choice. Have you ever been to Frank's down the road on Green Bank? No. They specialize in butter tarts. So I live near Big Rig in Ikea land over here. And just down Green Bank, close to the police station... There is a little sandwich shop called Frank's. Sandwiches are great. Butter tarts are better. And he does about six or seven different varieties of butter tarts. Whether it's the traditional kind, pecan, uh, those stupid little lemon tart thingies, and right, the right. little butter tart shell. You know, all those different kinds. He has them just down the street. Interesting. He is an awesome guy. Definitely go get a sandwich. They're like dead cheap. and super good. <laughs> anyway... Not a sponsored podcast. <laughs> I just really like sandwiches and butter tarts. This definitely smells like a butter tart, but does it taste like a butter tart? Here's the, here's the test. I get it. I don't like it. This one I'm finding has a bit more of that extracty flavor. What does know. extracty flavor taste like? To me, it tastes like roof of your mouth, almost metallic leftover. Not metallic so much as like... The le- like it almost feels like a leftover metallics. Uh, uh, like it's recording. clinging to your your like it's scraping your palate a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and and it gets basically definitely around the upper parts of my mouth. And I it get just, that. It just it's it it reminds me of 
of fake because anything that I that I've tasted with that usually has bad extract or cheaper artificial flavors has that sort of feel. Aspartame does that to me as well. That same kind of concept of, of weird, clingy mouthfeel. I remember this the first time we had it. I remember it being a bit better than this. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that they, since they put it in cans, that they've started to fine-tune it a little bit to make it a little more mass-producible. Because the first time they had it, it was a very small batch. Okay, so they added perhaps more powerful extracts could be or more maybe higher quality ones who knows mm. isn't my favorite beer i'll be honest with you mm. but i do get that butter tart flavor for sure definitely a novelty beer 100 percent. this one's this one was a novelty beer it, it surprised i think i think it surprised the, the the guys that sought us and how popular it was and that's why they, they had to sort of bring it back by popular demand i don't think they planned to because i think it it Pulls at our Canadiana heartstrings a little bit. Yes. You know, Although we, it has an eagle on the can. Eagles love butter tarts. They swoop down and they steal them from me. When I walk back home from Frank's, it's terrible. It's a problem. <laughs> yeah, I can believe that. Everyone, I am so impressed with myself. I managed to open this wax sealed bottle that Chuck opened before I opened it. I didn't open it. I just used the tricks that I've learned in the trade to make it a little more easy to open. So the last beer we're having is a bit of a whammy. 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 Because this is probably the biggest beer that we have here. So this is Castle Brewery's Railroad Special Maple Rye Ale. So this is this year's version. We were treated on the weekend to their 2013 original bottle. So this is four years later. Wow. And this is 8.7% ABV. And this is an adjunct beer. I would consider it to be anyway. Brewed right. with maple sap. Right, so... We looking that up as well. We're one of the other ways to talk about adjuncts is the a non malt source of fermentable sugar. So because they use the maple sap here as the fermentable sugar, I would agree that this one probably could be considered an adjunct beer. With all of the connotations that that comes with that, do we expect this to be a good beer? Of course we do. It's, it's going to be delicious. <laughs> and they've really stepped up their packaging for this beer. This year they've changed up their labels a little bit. They've also added some waxed waxing to the bottle cap, which I hate, but I know it makes the bottle look fancy and makes people want to buy it. I get it. It makes people want to put it in their cellars. Exactly, even though it does nothing. It. It, the waxing actually doesn't help it. No, but I guess it's sort of a reminder or a sign that this one is intended to be or can be cellar and as we learned it definitely can be it does get better over time as a little hint to people yeah I put some wax in the bottle you can sell her this yeah you definitely pick up a few bottles of this and stick it in there after four years i would say that we could probably stick that bottle i had over the weekend for another year and it would still be tasting quite well it was one of the rare bottles i had that i managed to sell her that actually tasted good <laughs> this doesn't happen very often but this beer is quite a treat, and I think it really shows off what adding flavors to a beer can do, especially if you're really, really picky with those flavors and you want to spend a little bit more money on those flavors, because this does use maple sap instead of water in the brewing process. And I can really taste the rye on this version of it. I think that might be the big difference between the fresher version and the cellared version. On 2013, the maple came out a lot stronger, and on this version, the rye is still quite readily apparent. If I were to recommend, I would say, yeah, definitely buy a few bottles so that you can have a couple fresh and put a couple into the cellar to be patient for a few years, because you'll get the best of both worlds that way. And this is actually a really fun beer, because you can definitely get that if you want to be nerdy and say... You want to get a terroir from beer. This would be that example. Whereas from Castleman, it's made from local maple sap. It's really a, a taste of what the area offers. Whether you can't really get that from other beers. For example, this maple butter tart beer, you're really getting a taste of the terroir of some kind of flavor factory. That's true. Uh, and with the maple pineapple beer, you're getting a nice little organic pineapple juice that may come from Mexico. 
whereas this one definitely does come from Castleman. We'll wrap this podcast up. It'll be another short one, but we are preparing for a glamorous Toronto trip that we're leaving in a few days for. Yes. Actually, when you're listening to this, the trip will be done the trip, most likely. We'll be hungover, have a whole bunch of bottles from a great amount of Toronto breweries, met a whole bunch of new people, and would have arranged a whole bunch of new podcasts for you guys to listen to. Which will be a lot of fun as we tour the Toronto area, and we'll pro- probably throw together a podcast we'll tasting Toronto beers. So if you want to be made jealous because you can't make it to Toronto, then you should probably listen to us. There'll be lots of beers for you to listen to. <laughs> make sure you follow us on 613 Beercast After Dark on Facebook, 613 Beercast on Twitter and on Instagram. And we'll talk to you next week.